Which of these does not belong? Remember, there are um, different correct answers. All of them could be could not belong for different reasons. Take a second, think about that, and then if you have or think you have an answer for one of them, go ahead and raise your hand and talk about that. Okay, so I said D because it's a negative slope. Who else was thinking D because it's negative? Okay, okay. Anyone else? Good, Ty. Okay, so B is the only one going through that origin. All the other ones are somewhere else. Anyone else think that? Okay, a couple of us. Anyone else? Go ahead, thank you. Okay, so C is the only one that has a negative y intercept, where the other ones have positive or zero y intercepts. So was anyone else thinking that same thing? Okay. And then why would A not work? What's the difference? Okay. So it does have a negative, there would be an x-intercept. Um, is there anything else? Or was anyone thinking that about the x-value? No, okay. Any other reasons we might think a is different or doesn't belong? Four. Four is the slope of one. Approximately. Approximately, okay. So it looks like it has a slope of one. Could be, could not be. We don't know for certain. This one definitely doesn't have a slope of one. It's like more slanted. Um, that one has a negative slope, so that's out anyway. But this one is super, so definitely not one. So it could be. Um, I could, I was thinking about this one as it has a positive y intercept and it's higher than this one, so it has a different y intercept than that one. That could also be why it doesn't belong. Any other thoughts before we get into our notes? Does anyone need another copy of those notes? It should look like Where, we, where you were able to look at what does the A slider, what does the C slider do. So in that, you need one. Um, what those letters really represented, A was really your slope, and C was really your y-intercept. So some of you figured that out, some of you maybe didn't, and that's okay because we're going to talk about what exactly all of that stuff means here in a moment. So, and you can also kind of check your exploration to see were you right, did you get it exactly right, maybe you didn't have some of the vocab, and so on and so forth. So notice that this has a different learning target than the slope, so this is its own thing, transformations. The actual definition for transformations is listed, but I'll read it out. It changes the position or size of a figure, so you'll do transformations in geometry as well, but with like shapes and stuff. And then we'll talk about specific types of transformations. So when you move a figure up, down, left, right, does a shift or a translation? Anyone heard that word before translation? Yes, okay. And then we're just gonna talk about vertical translation for now. Um, when we talk about quadratics, I know we're still gonna talk about vertical. I don't remember if we're gonna talk about horizontal either, but we'll get there later. 
So when we talk about vertical translation, the C that you were moving is like the K here, um, which is also confusing because that's not the B and the silk kind of form. We use different things for all for all the different things. So when you see this in general, this is the general format for all of your functions. You'll talk more about other functions. We'll talk about a couple more in this class, but more, um, not really in geometry, but objectivity, things like that. So vertical translation, we know, vertical, we know it's up and down. And you should have seen that when it was like a plus C, it moved up. So we want to think about the words shifted up, translated up, and relate that to the y-intercept. All of those things are happening to the y-intercept. And then when the C value or the K value is negative, it shifted down or translated down, the y-intercept did that. Then, so dilation really means, um, it means something else. There's a, somewhere over there in the vocab, there's an actual definition for dilation. But when talking about it for linear, we really just look at the change in steepness. So is it steeper or less steep? And we talked a lot about that when we were talking about the hill, which one do we, would we rather climb? or the slopes, looking at the steepness and things like that. So you should have found when A is greater than 1, so 2, 3, 5, whatever, the slope gets really steep. Think about that like if you were skiing or sledding or skating or something down this hill, you're going to get down it faster, steeper. Or you can say it's a number of times as steep, it's 5 times as steep, it's 2 times as steep, things like that. Or, or you also should have found if the number was between 0 and 1, so like 0.5, 1 half, uh, 3 fourths, any of those fractions or decimals, then the line became less steep. And that was kind of one of the ones in the warm-up. It was like kind of slanted, or the hill was less steep. That would take you a longer amount of time to get down that hill, skiing, sledding, whatever, if you were doing climbing. Or you can say it's half as steep, or a third as steep, but those mean the same, the same thing, less steep, half as steep, uh, steeper, two times as steep. So those are the words that we're actually going to be using, steep, steeper, steepness, less steep, shifted up, translated, shifted down, all of those. And then there's one last one that you may have seen when A was negative that it changed direction. It started off as a positive and now it's a negative. That reflects it over the x-axis or makes it a negative slope. So we need to keep all of those in mind as we do this. So we're going to describe this, but we want to compare it always to y equals x. So first let's talk about this y equals x. What would the slope of this be? One. It's invisible. We don't see it, but it's right here. The slope would be one. And then what would the y-intercept be? Zero. So always when we're talking about translation, we're comparing it back to that. What happened from this to this, what did it do? Where did it move? How did it, is it steeper? Is it less steep? Did it shift? Is it reflective? Okay, so now comparing, we started at this and now we're at this. What changed? We can talk about the numbers, the signs, and then we can put the words to it. How is this one different than the for the for the slope of up? Okay, so the slope is now a fraction. It was one third, and now because it's a fraction, and that fraction slope deals with steepness, would that make it steeper or less steep? Less steep because it falls in this. One third, so I'm not looking at the negative, I'm only looking at the one third. The one third is not greater than one, but it falls in between zero and one. So that makes that less steep. Okay. Okay. 
So I can say the slope is less steep by one third. Or we can say it's one third as steep, one third less steep, whatever combination of that. What else changed? The y intercept. Okay, so it was zero, it's now two. So looking back at our words for vertical translation and what the y intercept is doing, what did it do? It shifted up because it's a plus two. So I can say the y-intercept shifted or translated up to. So when we describe these, we have to say what is being changed, the slope of the y-intercept. Um, by what? Is it steep or less steep? Shifted? And by how much? We have to use all of those words when we describe. Okay, and then one last thing happened from here to here. What is that last one, Brian? Um, Anyone else have an idea? There's one last thing in here that this one originally did not have. The negative sign. So that does something completely different. It still does something to the slope, so the slope can have two things happen to it, two transformations happen to it, and that's where your reflection comes into play. So you would just say the slope was reflected. The negative, so try to distinguish slope. When we talked about it yesterday, yes, we want the negative and put it all those things. But when we're talking about transformations, the negative and the actual numeric number are two separate things. The number tells us the steepness, the negative tells us if it's reflected. Okay. Other questions on that transformation? So we're going to do the same thing here. What changed from this original to this? Brandon, are you going to say something? Okay. The slope. Yeah, the slope. What about it? More steep or steeper by three, yes. And then what was the last thing that happened? Did that change? I heard you say the positive sign changed the negative, but we're comparing it from this one to this one. Kelly? So the y-intercept shifted yes. down by two? Yes, the y-intercept shifted down by two. Questions on any of that? On to the next page. Okay. So, um, one, there was supposed to be this same line on this. So, if you want that same line on this, we can graph it really quickly. 
by starting at the origin, plotting a point. What's the slope of this line? One. So I can go up one, over one, and keep plotting slope points. And I can also go down one and left one and keep plot plotting slope points. And then, to the best of your ability, draw a straight line through it that has arrows at the end. Now, that part is not necessary, but if it helps you visualize this next part, do that. So, just like the last problem, we're going to describe an up. Now the equation that we had written is still up here. So this is shown, or we're comparing it in our minds. What change? So using our transformation words, which, which of the two things, slope or line up, change, and how? <coughs> So why does it change and how? Mm -hmm. So we would say either it translated or it shifted down. Because um, you also need a direction, especially for the y-intercept. So if the y-intercept shifted down 4 from where it originally is, go down 4, and that's where the new y-intercept is going to be. Now, did the slope change at all? So, even if the slope doesn't change, we still have to describe it. So if it didn't change, we just say that. The slope didn't change. So the slope didn't change. That means I can plot it the same way I just plotted this line, by going up one and over one as many times as possible. And then down one and left one as many times as possible. And then draw a line that goes through that. And make sure you have arrows at the end. We're gonna actually get into graphing Maybe today, maybe next class, we'll see. But now I can see that my new line has shifted down four. Questions on that? Let's describe this next one. What changed? What happened? Okay, so not comparing this one to this one, but the original to this one. So, the slope is reflected. Did the wires have changed? No, so we can say the y intercept stays the same. If you want to be a little bit extra, you can also say the steepness didn't change, but that's not 100% necessary. I'm going to write it just so you have it, but you don't need it. So if the slope is reflected, where it was positive is now going to be negative. The number is going to be the same. So if it was 1, it's still going to be 1, but negatively. So it's going to start at the same place, since the line intercept didn't change, at that 0, 0. And now I'm going to go up 1 and left 1 to show that it reflected. And then down 1 and right 1, as many times.
and draw a line through that. Okay. It's like everything, so everything's blue ish. Do we have any questions so far about describing the transformations and how we're graphing those transformations? You'll have more practice on this in a minute. The next two are multiple choice, kind of, uh, or form blank, whatever. So here, now we're given that equation again, and we're given a second equation. And we need to fill out what's happening. So the first question is the graph of y2. So there's not an actual graph that's just talking about the function, the equation. The graph of y2, was it shifted up or down from this graph? Up y. No, you're right. So when I see the word shifted, I'm thinking y-intercept. So my y-intercept is at plus 5, so that has to go up. The graph of y2 is steeper or less steep than the graph of y1? Is this the place to be? Less steep, why? Yes, the fraction is in the middle of 0 and 1. And then describe what the negative affects. What does that part do? Reflection of the slope. I'm just going to put slope. Basically, once you get these words in your mind, you can do all of these things. It's just keeping the words straight. Questions on that one before we go on to six? Okay, so same thing. It gives us that original and it gives us this new equation. The slope of y2 is, now it gives us different options, divided by 5, 5 less than, 5 times more, or 5 five more than the graph of y1. So which of these could we apply to get this? I wonder where you're going to answer. No, okay. Laura? So it's like 5 times more, so the original one is 1. So. Yes. So we have to think about how could we change 1 to 5, that was supposed to be 2. Okay. How, we could, how could we change 1 to 5? If we added 5 to it, well, that wouldn't be 5. So 5 uh, more than out. If I subtracted it, that also wouldn't work. If I divided it, well, now I have a fraction. So the only one left is b, 5 times more. But also, that goes with your steepness. It's 5 times as steep. So think about your slope as you're multiplying. Or, if it's a fraction, divide. The y-intercept of y2 is divided by 2, 2 less than, 2 times more, 2 more than the graph of y1. What do we think about that one? So what was this original y intercept? Zero. And now it's at negative two. How did I get from zero to negative two? Which would be two to one. Two. Yes, you subtracted it, which would be two less than. That's the same as so not the actual less than symbol and inequalities, but less than also means subtracting. So you can think about your y-intercept as you're adding or subtracting. 
slope is multiplying and dividing, y-intercept is adding and subtracting. Right. I'm going to state these directions and then I want to see if you can plot these points. So here it gives us our descriptions. We have our original and then for our second one, the one we're going to graph, it's been shifted up five units. So think about which one that would be. And it's one half SC. Think about which of those that would change. See if you can graph six points that would represent those two things. Take a minute and do that. So we should have started with this. The shifted up five because our new y intercept would be at five. And then our slope would be one half SD, so I could go up one to the right two. And you can pick any of these six points, I'm just going to draw them all. Actually, that's the wrong six points, and I'm wrong. So you should have had this, and then you can create your line. Anyone have questions on how we got there? We're going to do one last thing. Just describe a couple more. We'll go on to the next page, and then you guys are going to do the Desmos activity that goes with this that is due today regardless. So you'll have a chance to do it in class um, after we do this. So on the back, there are a bunch of questions. We'll just do one or two just to get in the habit of graphing as well as um, describing once more. So if you need to rewrite, oh, I'm doing one. Rewrite that original somewhere so that it's there, you can visualize it. That's what I'm comparing to. If you don't need it, that's fine. How did this change from this to this? What changed? The wires have shifted down by five. Which means instead of starting at zero, it's going to start at negative five. And the slope did what? Go ahead, Brian. Okay, so how could we use that using our words? There we go. Six times steeper. means I'm going to go up six to the right one as many times as I can from that y-intercept and plot a point. I think you can only do it once. You could do it twice, but you'd be off the graph. You can do that, or you can just do the one. And then make your line do that. If we were to do number two, did anything change? This is our equation. No. So I can say both things didn't change. The y intercept and the slope did not change or stayed the same. Which means my y intercept would be at what? We're at where? Zero, so that's where I would start. And my slope would be what? One. And I could go up one and right one and I can and then back at the one step down one and left one as many times. Okay.
we're going to give you a chance to practice, and then after that practice, we're going to come back and talk about uh, something else. So now you need your iPads. On the Canvas page, you can go uh, just into my class, into the home, back into Unit 2. Um, sorry, no. Go back. The next thing will be for you to do. If you go into your most recent announcement on the home page, can you see? I forgot. I don't know if you can see that on that. Can you guys see the announcements on the course? Yeah. So if you go into the most recent announcement, which would have been on the 27th, you can go into the Desmos practice that says transformation and click on that. And you can click on Desmos. And when you go into Desmos, you're going to log in with Desmos. If you have not joined the Desmos class code, you will need to raise your hand and I'll help you do that. But if you've already joined, you can go ahead and log in with Desmos and go ahead and start the Marvels transformation activity. So talk through this a bit and see if you have time for this activity. If you don't, it's okay. So we talked a lot about slope and y-intercepts previously. Notice that the learning target is the same. We're just talking about something different today. X and Y intercepts, first we're going to talk about it graphically. So X intercepts is where the points fall, cross, touch the X axis. When we start to get into it algebraically, it's where Y equals zero. So X intercept, Y equals zero. You need to keep that in mind. And then Y intercept is basically the opposite. The Y intercept is on the Y axis. It touches, crosses, uh, intersects the Y axis. And then X equals zero for our y intercept. Those are important pieces of information. Something else to notice, a uh, couple things. One, we should be writing our intercepts in order pairs, so parentheses, x comma y, parentheses. And then there are different names for x-intercepts. You may have heard these already, which is great. X-intercepts, the main one, groups, they may also be called solutions, they are also called and zeros. So if I say what is the zero, I'm asking for the x-intercept. If I'm asking for the solution, I'm asking for the x-intercept. When we were talking about the points on the graph and why those work, they're solutions because they were not x-intercepts, but they were also solutions. So on this beginning, we're just going to find the x and y intercepts by looking at where does it cross the x and y axis. I'm going to highlight those. That may also help you if you need to see that a little bit clearer. So on number one, where does this line, the diagonal line, cross the x axis? At two. So we will write that as 2, 0. Where does it cross the y-axis? Negative 3. Negative three. So we will write that 0, negative 3. x intercepts of number 2. Where does it cross? There might be more than one. Negative four is one of them. And positive two, so you would write both of those. Negative four comma zero and two comma zero. Y-intercepts. How would I write that? Zero positive eight. Okay. X and Y 
intercept of number three. I'm not going to outline the x and y axis, but if you need to do that, continue to do that. There might be multiple. For the x and the y. Okay. So give me one of them and tell me how to write it. For which one? Okay, so 5, 0. And then the other two? Let's skip down to number six. What are x and y intercepts of that? There might be multiple. That's positive three for the x or the y intercept. Okay, so how would I write that? That's one. Yes, they both share the same intercept, 0, 0. And then there's one more. Negative 5, 0. Okay, so before we talk about the algebraic, I'm going to start you guys on this activity. You may not have a chance to finish it, and that's okay. I'm going to unlock those. Once your iPad unlocks, you should be in Canvas. On the home page, go into Unit 2. And go into the intercepts additional practice. So in the intercepts piece, intercepts additional practice. And there should be a Desmos activity right there embedded. Log in with Desmos the same way you just did. And start that. <laughs> 